Welcome to the Pleasant Green Sunday School. Uh, this is Lesson 2 for June the 10th, 2018. We're still in Unit 1 entitled, God is Just and Merciful. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is You Reap What You Sow. Our devotional reading comes out of Psalm 78, verses 1 through 8. Our background scripture is taken from Matthew chapter 13, uh, verses 24 through 43. And we'll be studying today from uh, the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 13, uh, verses 24 through 33. And our key verse reads, Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. That's taken from Matthew chapter 13 verse 30 uh, from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore the vision of justice presented in Jesus' parables of the wheat and the weeds. Uh, the mustard seed and the leaven also to aspire uh, to experience greater depths of God's redemptive justice and then thirdly to commit to embody the values of divine justice uh, these parables express. We have three outlines that will be a part of our discussion today uh, uh, taken from the adult quarterly. The first one is entitled The Work of the Enemy. The second outline is entitled Let Them Grow Together. And then the third outline is entitled The Power of a Little. And so we certainly thank and praise God uh, for this yet another beautiful uh, Sunday School lesson. And we certainly thank and praise God for the privilege uh, we never want to take anything for granted, uh, and so I do um, humbly thank God for this privilege to be able to share this lesson with you. Uh, last week we started in the 12th chapter of the book of Matthew, and today we are in the 13th chapter. I want to read uh, just part of the biblical context for this lesson because uh, we have quite a bit of material that we want to be able to cover uh, whereby we may be able to understand. But it says here this series of parables in Matthew 13 illustrates the need to interpret scripture in context. Taken by itself, the parable of the weeds among the wheat might be seen to teach that the children of the evil one, illustrated by the weeds, are destined for damnation, with no chance to change their destiny. The parable really presented a dark picture of Satan's influence on the world. Yet the parable of the yeast shows that the unleavened can be leavened. That is, those outside the kingdom can be made part of the kingdom. In contrast to the parable of the weeds, the parable of the leaven provided a positive picture of God's overriding influence in all of creation. All three parables teach that the kingdom of God is a growing thing. So we want to be able to um, <clears throat> make some sense, if you will, of, of where our discussion uh, will take place. I want to just share a little bit about the book of Matthew so we can understand uh, what we're reading. Uh, the book of Matthew uh, we should understand is uh, a Jewish gospel and the key to uh, the interpretation of this book is an understanding of God's program for Israel uh, and her Messiah. I want you to look at John chapter 1 verses 10 through 13 and also Romans chapter 10 verses 1 through 4 and so uh, the book of Matthew also illustrates the rejection of the kingdom message uh, that begins uh, if you go back in chapter 11 and then it continues this rejection of the king and his message all the way through uh, chapter 28 uh, and the resurrection of the rejected king. We also want to make mention of what Matthew is doing um, uh, the goal of his book. Uh, what he does, he takes 
uh, he uses the Old Testament uh, rooted in prophecy related to the coming of Messiah as his theology uh, and so you find a lot of uh, 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 understanding from that perspective uh, and you may find yourself going back to the Old Testament quite a bit because there's a lot of reference of what was said and, and so Matthew does a masterful work uh, certainly with the help of the Holy Spirit uh, to use the Old Testament uh, as a means of his uh, theology so we want to keep those things in mind we also want to make mention that the 13th chapter of the book of Matthew uh, beginning at verse uh, 1 through verse 53 uh, is a collection of parables uh, on the nature of the kingdom of heaven uh, is the third great discourse in Matthew and so also uh, parables uh, although the term parable can have a broad range of meanings uh, Jesus parables are his distinctive teaching through brief comparisons or narratives they they usually have one central point or idea but most of Jesus parables are clear but they also contain a depth of meaning that only one with the right relationship to Jesus can comprehend so uh, it is uh, only to the disciples that Jesus gives the interpretation uh, of the parable uh, particularly of the sower uh, and the parable of the tares that's in verse 36 through 43 so uh, the ungodly miss this deeper meaning because uh, their lack their lack of a proper relationship with God has darkened their thoughts so again um, those who have a right relationship uh, with Jesus uh, parables deepen understanding and it also fosters that relationship uh, but those uh, who do not uh, parables increase confusion uh, and also ignorance so thus the function of parables is both to enlighten and also to conceal so the kind of uh, overarching theme uh, surrounding uh, our text today is being in a right relationship uh, with Jesus Christ uh, and so there are two uh, uh, very quickly two particular audiences if you will that that we see in uh, the 13th chapter of the book of Matthew uh, beginning if you b went back to the first verse of the 13th chapter it talks about and I'll read this is here it says on the same day Jesus uh, went out of the house and sat by the sea verse 2 says and a great multitudes were gathered together to him so that uh, he got into a boat and sat and the whole multitude uh, stood on the shore so uh, uh, Jesus audience is made up of a multitude and it also uh, we see Jesus referencing uh, specifically to his disciples so we have the disciples and we have the multitude and we could uh, uh, argue if you will that that the multitude these ind individuals may not be in the right relationship uh, with Jesus Christ uh, hence he is telling them uh, parables but he does give interpretation uh, to his disciples on, on these various uh, uh, definitions if you will of the parables that he is teaching so we want to be able to keep those things in mind so uh, we want to begin in our text today our first outline is entitled the work of the enemy and this is taken from uh, Matthew the 13th chapter verses 24 through 28a uh, and I want to read this from the uh, uh, from the NIV translation the Bible says Jesus told them another parable uh, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field but while everyone was sleeping his enemy came and sowed seeds uh, among the wheat and went away uh, when the wheat sprouted and formed heads then the the weeds also appeared Verse 27, the owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? 
Where then did the weeds come from? Verse 28, the enemy did this, he replied. It should be noted that we are looking at three uh, different parables, so we may be shifting uh, just a bit in our uh, uh, lesson outlines from one parable to the next. But here, uh, in this particular passage, Jesus uh, began chapter 13 with a parable of the sower. That's, that's in verses 1 and 9. So in verses uh, 10 through 17, he explained why he spoke in parables. So just before our printed text, Jesus explained the parable of the sower. That's in verses 18 through 23. So from the wording of verse 24, Jesus' seaside audience was eager to hear more of his teaching. But we must keep in mind that Jesus' teaching and Jesus' style were like nothing that the Jewish people had ever experienced. So Jesus used the parable of the weeds to prophesy about the future of God's kingdom on earth. So in the early church the opposition from the Jewish religious establishment and the Roman authorities kept the church on the straight and narrow path. However, the time came when worldly influences began to crop up and negatively influence the church. So we can see that uh, uh, in this definition here about the weeds uh, and also are the tares and the wheat and so it goes on to say in verse 37 not in the printed text that uh, Jesus explained that he was the sower uh, mentioned in verse 24 in fact Jesus had been sowing since the beginning of his earthly ministry he would continue until he ascended back to heaven so while the seed represented the word of God in the parable of the sower the good seed represented uh, the believers and so uh, the field represents the world not the church so uh, there's been a lot of debate on the exact meaning of of, of the sleeping men uh, uh, in verse uh, uh, 25 so but as we look at this parable here and the audience uh, that Jesus is speaking to, Jesus is trying to teach and he is trying to move the people into a deeper understanding of his purpose and of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, uh, which simply means the rule and the reign of God. And so uh, understanding the fact that uh, uh, the Jews... Uh, they are uh, actively rejecting uh, 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 the Messiah. They are uh, 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 rejecting the, the kingdom message. They are rejecting the word of God that is presented to them. Uh, and so uh, it likens to, uh, if you go back over into the fifth chapter and then uh, read that through the seven chapters of the book of Matthew, uh, the theme of that uh of the sermon and I want to go get that very quickly because I think it's relevant to what we are talking about uh, so the theme for the Sermon of the Mount is actually in verse 20 of the fifth chapter uh, of the book of uh, Matthew and this is Jesus talking here uh, he says here for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So uh, we can see through this parable here that Jesus is his desire is to move the people past the 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 outer uh, rituals of the law into more of a deeper understanding, one that can be internalized uh, as, as as the message is proclaimed to them. Let me let me say this to you this way: when we hear the word of God what do we do with that message do we seek to understand do we uh, seek to go back uh, do we look for just the uh, uh, the outer uh, rituals of, of setting uh, and hearing the word of God 
uh, as it is proclaimed to us or are we the type of individuals that go back and see what the text can can give to us that we can internalize that we can be better and so this parable as I said earlier is being given to people to prompt them to become seekers uh, and to become searchers of the Word of God now if you notice as we get a little bit further into the text the disciples ask questions they wanted to know what it meant uh, you don't find that the multitudes asked uh, uh, at least I did not of, of, of uh, the multitudes asking any questions it's the followers it's the disciples it's one it's the ones that are in the relationship it's the ones that are in the relationship and trying to seek to go deeper into the relationship so they are actually concerned about what Jesus is saying to the point that they are asking questions that they may be able to understand and so this is where uh, 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 that this this text here this parable uh, is pushing Jesus could have completely just told them what it meant but there's a responsibility that we have to have as believers and as followers of Jesus Christ that we have to do our due diligence uh, uh, Paul says to Timothy uh, writes to Timothy uh, that, 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 that we should study uh, to show thyself a proved workman unto God that need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so are we just readers of God's word or are we studiers, uh, studiers of God's word or are we just hearers of God's word or are we doers and so uh, there is uh, something that we need to understand that Jesus is purposefully teaching this way to prompt uh, these individuals to lead them to a place where they can uh, uh, deepen if they don't have a relationship that that can be something that would be their goal so it goes on to say here while these men slept Satan the enemy sold weeds in the field in other words Satan used people uh, he seduced to sow seeds of discord in the world and so some of these weeds would infiltrate the church becoming counterfeit Christians we have this issue going on today uh, that people have a, 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 a as Paul says about Israel in the 10th chapter of Romans they have a zeal of God but not according to to knowledge and so they don't have an accurate interpretation uh, uh, of the gospel of Jesus Christ and this is why we have to study there are many things that we read in God's word that we simply do not understand so what do we do about that do we do we just rely on on, on someone else to tell us what it means or do we take it upon ourselves to look for ourselves to to try to gain insight and sometimes uh, the enemy because he knows the word he quotes scripture but he always takes it out of context he always uses it uh, 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 to oppose what the the text really means and so we really need to understand the works of Satan uh, uh, to understand that that uh, uh, John the first epistle of John chapter 4 uh, verse 1 uh, John says beloved believe not every spirit but test the spirits to see if they are of God and so we have to pay attention to these kinds of things but but this parable is noteworthy here uh, that that's why the weeds were not discovered until the wheat began to fill out or sprout so not unlike the church today counterfeit Christians flow along nicely until something triggers them uh, to reveal their true identity and at that point in the parable the owner's servants in verse 27 wanted to know how this happened and, and so Jesus said it is the work of the enemy it's the work of Satan the enemy did this one other point before we move on to the next outline we have to make sure that we are indoctrinated uh, do you remember when uh, Jesus was in the wilderness uh, rather you're reading Matthew's account in uh, the fourth chapter or Luke's account uh, I believe also in the fourth chapter do you understand that that Satan was quoting scripture at that Satan was using the law he was using what the law said he was using what the Word of God says in an effort to trick 
Jesus in an effort to test him in an effort to uh, 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 to manipulate him but how did Jesus respond with the word of God but in the right context and so that's very important so all of us as believers as disciples the literal meaning of the word disciple is a follower or a learner or a student we should always stay in student mode we should always stay in learning mode we should always continue to study God's word because there are individuals who simply know what the word says but they don't actually know what it means and they don't know how that text should be applied uh, to 2018 so that's very important for us to understand uh, so uh, the question is asked uh, in the quarterly considering that many people have not experienced uh, let alone seen form life what non-form word pictures uh, might speak with greater relevance to an urban culture about the kind of influence Jesus was talking about in the wheat and the weeds and the mustard seed uh, parables that's very uh, uh, important question so if we're not talking about agriculture if we're not talking about wheat and weeds then what would we be talking about that would help us understand the context of, of this parable here so certainly our culture presents some very uh, 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 great challenges for us and what I mean by that is the callousness and the the activity of, of, of our culture today our environment uh, of the lifestyle of the church uh, the tone of the church what 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 are we ascribing to have we become more of a compromised type of individual church or a local church and and there are also doctrinal matters. What are we actually saying to people about salvation? What are we saying? Are we moving people? Uh, I believe the book of Ephesians chapter 2 uh, and chapter 3 talks about edifying people, presenting every man uh, 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 in a mature status uh, as opposed to individuals who are being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. So we have to understand that these challenges that the church face uh, may be more activity of Satan in, in our midst. It may be more of, of a distraction for us but the same consequences apply if we do not understand uh, Jesus Christ if we do not understand the plan of salvation we certainly cannot teach that plan and so we want to make sure that we are giving accurate information that we are moving people from point A to point B I'm not talking about Christian growth in terms of uh, uh, an attendance uh, card that we are filling up the pews I'm talking about the kind of Christian growth that is prompting our faith to grow and so uh, that's the area that in the areas that we want to be moving in in a doctrinal way and also helping individuals not just to be church members but to be nurtured by the gospel whereby they may grow so we want to keep those things in mind and then uh, our next outline is entitled let them grow together and this is taken from Matthew chapter 13 uh, verses uh, 28b through 30 and the, I want to read this from the King James Version uh, the Bible says the servant said to him wilt thou then that we go and gather them up but he said nay or no lest while ye gather up the tares ye root up also the wheat with them uh, let both grow together until the harvest and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them but gather uh, the wheat into my barn so what is Jesus saying here so weeds literally steal the nutrients from the wheat and it would uh, make sense for the farmer, for the farm owner servant to ask uh, whether he wanted them to pull up the weeds. The farmer did not want his servants to pull the weeds uh, for fear of destroying the wheat. So as we get into a little bit of an interpretation about this parable, when we have things or negative things going on in the church, 
what do we do about this so this is more of a strategy uh, in this parable here that Jesus is saying uh, uh, no don't pull up the tares uh, uh, that would be very easy to do uh, and sometimes when we're handling a situation we can uh, uh, have the capacity uh, the propensity to tear up the hole or to uproot the hole uh, I don't know if this has ever happened to you but sometimes the decisions that we make and how we handle a situation even in the church it upsets the faith of other believers we have to always keep in mind that even though that that uh, uh, that we have faith and let's just say that everyone in the church has faith but what level of faith are they on so uh, they may be weaker they may be stronger so in handling a situation we could upset the weaker vessels we could upset the individuals who cannot discern the way that you can who may not understand the Bible as you do and so we can cause uh, things to happen and there have been many cases where uh, uh, we have mistreated someone and just because the onlooker saw it and didn't understand what you did and why you did it it upset them and they left the church and so we have to always keep these things in mind and so this is what Jesus is saying here um, so that the servants as the owner do you want us to go and pull the weeds up the farmers astute reply was no let them grow together uh, so the farmer was aware that the servants may inadvertently pull up a uh, wheat along with the weeds so that is why we must be very careful how to handle and how we handle certain situation in our churches today so our first the instinct is to immediately throw out counterfeit Christians however because of their family and friend ties and other influences uh, we must proceed cautiously so literally we may have to do as Jesus said in his parable let both grow together until the harvest you know uh, and and that is very uh, challenging for us to be able to do and it doesn't say we cannot respond to situations there was a, 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 a question here that we want to get to in the uh, 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 quarterly but we have to be careful how we respond we still have a responsibility uh, to uphold the biblical standards but uh, uh, I'll share this with you in terms of let's just say uh, uh, for instance we had a sin issue in the church it's it's good protocol biblical protocol uh, we are not targeting the individual but rather the sin the behavior the conduct uh, that is that that is problematic because that can infect the church uh, uh, in a way where uh, others may ascribe to that kind of behavior so we have to be able to address it in a biblical way to help the individuals know that we're not uh, quote unquote targeting you but we cannot allow and we cannot let uh, a sin just ruin the body as though this is something that we ascribe to so to more illustrate that point, Second Timothy chapter three, uh, and I want to go over there very quickly because I want to read this uh, to us to help us understand what we can do with the gospel and how to use the gospel in terms of of, of dealing with uh, situations uh, in the church. Uh, this is Second Timothy chapter three at verse uh, beginning at verse. 16 the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work so we can do a lot of things with the gospel but how we use it uh, and God gave it to us that we might be thoroughly equipped that we might be able to use it in a way uh, that pleases him so we do have these things in our arsenal uh, 
uh, that we might be able to use but but we have to be careful that we don't we don't ruin uh, the entire following or the entire setting um, I would also uh, encourage you to read 2nd Timothy uh, chapter 2 uh, verse 19 so the question is in the quarterly uh, is asked how do you respond uh, to the following statement not everyone professing to be saved will make it to heaven when I was reading this I, I thought about uh, Jesus with Nicodemus and uh, we won't have time to go over that but I want you to read uh, that exchange and I don't have to and we don't have to worry about uh, who makes it to heaven and, and all of these kinds of things Jesus says it to Nicodemus himself he speaks the text the Bible addresses uh, 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 what happens to an individual what must happen to an individual uh, if he is to uh, uh, make it into the kingdom uh, Jesus says you must be you must be born again so I want you to read John chapter 3 verses 3 through 8 and our last outline is entitled the power of a little yet another parable that we have uh, taken from Matthew chapter 13 uh, verses 31 through 33 so another parable uh, from the King James Version uh, that uh, he put forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is like uh, to a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field uh, which indeed is the least of all seeds but when it is grown it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof Verse 33, another parable spake he unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid three measures of meal to the whole was leavened. So let's unpack this a little bit, this parable of the, of the weeds among the wheat um, illustrates uh, that the people of God exist side by side in the world. And so uh, uh, with the children of the evil one, the parable of the mustard seed illustrates the growing influence of the kingdom. Those who are of or are actually in the kingdom of God. Jesus, again, is the one doing the planting and the field is the is is the world. So we must note that the mustard seed was called the smallest of the seeds and so uh, was known as such to Jesus listeners uh, the point Jesus made uh, was that from the small seed rather than a large uh, a small seed or a rather large tree would grow just like the growth of a mustard seed the church has grown exponentially since Jesus planted it during his earthly ministry the church stands to be to uh, uh, to become a beacon of hope in a seemingly hopeless world uh, just as the mustard seed provided uh, sanctuary for birds in times of turmoil and uncertainty uh, as our nation experienced during the uh, early days of, of our president Donald Trump the church towers above troubled times uh, to offer us a refuge so the parable of the yeast in a sense uh, puts together the leavened dough uh, mixes with the unleavened dough even as the wheat um, and the weeds are mixed in the same way and it should be understood that um, traditionally leaven uh, is considered evil uh, but here <clears throat> in this case uh, um, Jesus is talking about our influence uh, in the world so keeping with the immense influence of the church uh, this was an unusually large amount of flour for such a small amount of yeast but the growing influence of the yeast like the mustard seed affects the dough uh, that is not leaven uh, so that it becomes leaven also so what do we hear in Matthew chapter 5 uh, relevant to this commentary here Jesus said let your light so shine that men might see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. 
the church has a responsibility and we are placed uniquely by Jesus Christ in areas of great need uh, everyone may not be saved but every man needs salvation uh, everybody, everyone may not know Jesus Christ and the pardon of their sin but Jesus died for everyone you see where I'm going with this so we have a responsibility not just to edify one another but to share our faith in a way that we draw others into uh, the leaven or the teaching or the substance uh, that we are and and we teach these principles even in our uh, evangelism and discipleship that that we are, are nurturing individuals to become and, and that's what Jesus says in the 28th uh, chapter of, of Matthew in the Great Commission and all of the Gospels speak to this to make disciples uh, to teach nations to teach all nations uh, to go for us to go and for us to do and for to teach the things that Jesus has taught us uh, we are to teach these things that men might observe these teachings so are we teaching these things just to people that we know or who know Christ or are we teaching them to people who nothing know nothing about Christ so keep in mind these uh, individual uh, uh, the, the Jews if you will they rejected Jesus Christ and certainly he knew that and had been prophesied even from Isaiah in the 53rd chapter that he was despised and rejected and so but he came anyway uh, uh, and so he knew he would be crucified he prophesied that he would he told his disciples that uh, he would be turned over to uh, the religious leaders to uh, uh, to the scribes and the Pharisees he would be killed and he would be raised on the third day but it did not stop him from coming it did not stop him from accomplishing what he came to do so for all of us that complain about adversity we could look at Jesus and see that he had much adversity but the Bible says that and even he says Jesus says in John chapter 17 that he did it he finished it he did what he was told to do and so uh, we want to be able to keep these things in mind but uh, uh, the question is asked here in the quarterly the parable of the weeds among the wheat seems to teach a passive waiting for God to sort things out and while the other two parables demonstrate a more active influencing and changing things when is it better to be passive uh, versus active and we share that earlier so we need to evaluate the costs uh, we need to understand what is negatively impacting uh, the whole and as I said earlier we can always address and we should always address uh, uh, the sin aspect or the these types of things that creep into the church because they have the capacity uh, uh, to infect the entire church and so we have to keep those things in mind so I, th I believe there's a balance that 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 we have to uh, uh, have in terms of our leadership uh, and the 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 quality of leadership and uh, I'll simply uh, put it this way uh, perhaps you'll understand it in these terms that sometimes it may be better to lose a battle than to lose the war it may be better to lose a personal battle or an individual matter uh, to, to, to maybe not give that uh, so much attention but we don't want to lose the war we don't want to lose the war over the soul of God's people uh, we don't want to lose the the war over uh, uh, men being deceived for what we are not telling them uh, uh, we don't want to lose that soul we don't want to cause anyone to stumble and to lose uh, 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 and not make progress faith wise so I think we can understand uh, in this light that there are some things that we need to pay more attention to uh, and maybe deal with the less uh, or the lesser of the two uh, issues maybe at another time so uh, but we have uh, and certainly through our prayer life and and what we know about the gospel that God will lead us in a direction that is pleasing in his sight and so we move to our closing prayer merciful God we thank you
for being a just God. Your word is true uh, that you are not a respecter of persons. We ask you to help us daily to live out our days here on earth with lives befitting citizens of your kingdom. In the name of uh, your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we hope, trust, and pray that we've given you something to consider and certainly some scriptures that you can uh, that you can review at your leisure and I will just share this with you in closing don't just be a reader of God's Word study it study it learn those things ask questions about those things that you don't understand ask them of credible individuals who are seasoned who live a life uh, exemplifying the characteristics of Christ uh, but you don't have to settle uh, for not understanding and James says these words in the first chapter of his book if any man lacks wisdom let him ask of God but James also says when we ask we cannot ask and we we should not ask that 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 we're wavering and that we're doubting James says that man ought not to think that he will receive anything from God so God bless you until such time that the Lord will permit us to come to, uh, together again God bless you and take care